There's a question that I've been asked a lot, and it really wasn't until my last live stream video where somebody asked me point blank this very same question that I decided it is time to address this question because obviously a lot of people are struggling with this topic and I need to help them out. This topic, this question is multiple stitch count requirement. Why do we use it? When do we use it? How do we use it? We're gonna answer that question right now. Multiple stitch count requirement is so important for a couple different reasons, actually. The first most important reason is making sure that the pattern that you desire, or the pattern that you're trying to work up, will actually work with your foundation row chain. When we are talking about multiple stitch count requirement, we are generally referring to the foundation row chain that you are making for your project, really setting up the number of stitches required to make that pattern work. If you make too many chains, then you will either be left with this weird little chain tail <laughs> because you have met your pattern and there's a few extra chains here that you don't need, or you are left with an unfinished row or it looks funky or it just looks unfinished. For example, thinking of a ripple stitch. So, so many stitches up, then the stitches at the top, then so many stitches down, and then the stitches at the bottom, and then up, top, down, bottom. If you are working this project and you have not enough chains or too many chains and you are working, let's say, up, the stitches at the top, and then down, but it's only like and it's this little partial side and then you stop and then you're left with this little partial side all along the side of that blanket, your blanket's gonna look off. It's gonna look weird, unfinished, just wrong. And I know this because I have done this before, made a blanket where it was just this partial little row along that side and you just scratch your head like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> I'll put some pictures here of other stitches, crochet stitches, where the stitch count requirement is super important in order of, to make that pattern actually work. So that is the first and most important reason why stitch count requirement is important, is making sure that the pattern actually works. The second reason stitch count requirement is super important, and it's actually a very empowering part of stitch count requirement, is if you know the stitch count requirement of a pattern, then you can take that pattern and you can expand it as wide as you want, or you can make it as narrow as you want to make whatever blanket or whatever project that you wanna make. So for example, you find this baby blanket that you fall in love with, but it is only a receiving blanket size or a crib size, and you wanna make a queen size version of this blanket. All you have to do is take that stitch count requirement Work that stitch count requirement until you have met the blanket width dimension of a queen size blanket, and then you just work the pattern up until you've met the length dimension of that blanket. Boom, you're done. That's all you've got to worry about. And I feel like this is where a lot of people get hung up, is knowing how many multiple stitch counts or how to work that multiple stitch count to meet that blanket width dimension. So let's go ahead and take a second and go flip the camera and I'm gonna show you how to work up a stitch count and then how to make blanket width dimension. Okay, let's demonstrate how this whole multiple stitch count requirement works. Let's pretend that we wanna work a pattern and to make that pattern possible, we have to have a foundation row chain stitch count requirement of a multiple of six plus two. Okay, so I'll put that here at the top of the screen. Now we wanna focus on the project itself. How wide do we want this project to be? In this example, I will pretend that I'm making a receiving blanket and a receiving blanket needs to be 40 inches wide. So take your ruler or measuring tape so that we have something to guide you for your measurement. Take the yarn that and the crochet hook that was required by the pattern, the project that you want to do. Begin by starting with a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends at the end of the project. Create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to go. The stitch count requirement is a multiple of six plus two. We just focus on the multiple parts to begin with. So multiple of six, ignore the plus two. So start with six. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. Great. Let's check that. All right. We're about at an inch and a half. Okay, so we still got a, we have a long way to go. So add another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's check. Okay, we're about seven and a quarter inches now. So we still gotta keep going. So we will keep adding groups of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, until we reach our desired width of our project. So in this case, I wanted to get to 40 inches to meet my blanket dimension width requirement. So I would keep making groups of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, until I reached 40 inches. Okay. Once I have reached 40 inches, then I look at the addition number and here I, it says plus two. So now I will add two, one, two, and then I'm ready to move on to row one. So that is how the whole multiple of six and then plus two works. You keep working your group of six over and over and over until you've re reached your dimension and then you add the plus number. Now what if, for example, so I'm gonna take away that plus two that I added. What if I go to measure and I measure at 39? So I'm short, so I need to be at least my required blanket dimension. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this was at 39. Now when I measure, I'm over. That is okay. As long as you are over, you have met your required blanket width dimension. So that's good. We never wanna be under, we would rather be over. So even if you're over an inch or two, that's okay. You've at least met dimension and you've met your stitch count requirement in order to make the pattern work. And now that I have finished going over or reaching my dimension, now I would add my plus number, which is plus two. One, two, and I'm all ready to begin row one. All right, I think that is all you need to know other than if you wanted a shortcut, all you would have to do is look at your project, know the first group. So the first group of six chains that we made, we measured that and it equals one and a half inches or one and a quarter. I'd have to re recheck that but we found a measurement for the first group of six, right? So what you could do is you could take that first group of six and go six times two, let's move this, do six times two, and that equals 12. So 12 chains should equal this length times two, which would be three inches. Then you could take your six chains, multiply that by 10, so 60 chains, Take the length of six chains, multiply that by 10, and find out what length 60 chains would give you. And you could keep doing this math until you got a length that was over 40 inches, and that would tell you how many chains, a multiple of six, that you would need to reach that dimension, that length dimension that was over 40 inches. So it's easy math. It's easy to figure out once you know how to do it. And I hope that that was helpful in helping you to understand when looking at a multiple of six plus two, where we start, what we repeat, and then what and when we add the adding number, the plus two. All right, cool. Now we know multiple stitch count, how to work it, and how to make a project with dimension. This is all brilliant. What I wanna bring up now is patterns. There are two different patterns that I've come across where they address multiple stitch counts very differently and I wanted to bring them to your attention. This pattern right here shows foundation row, multiple chain count requirement needs to be in a multiple of two plus one. In this case, they are saying that the plus one is going to be the turning chain to get them onto row one. So, Good to know the turning chain is in that foundation row chain count. 
Then we look at this pattern right here. In this pattern, it says foundation row or multiple chain count requirement of a multiple of two plus one. But then if you go further into step one or row one, it says turn and then chain one. And you're like, wait a second, I'm chaining again after I just made a whole foundation row chain. What's happening? What's happening in this pattern right here, the foundation row is a multiple of two plus one, but that does that plus one does not include the turning chain. They want you to turn that foundation row chain and then chain one more, and that is your turning chain to get you onto row one. All right, this is important because I do know specific individuals who don't make foundation row chains. They choose not to. They like to make their half double crochet foundation or double crochet foundation row. And so they will take the foundation row, they will omit the turning chain, and they will just make that number of stitches for their foundation. So be very careful, read through the pattern to know if that foundation row does in fact include the turning chain or not. All right, I think the last thing that I wanna mention is work your pattern two rows in and then re-measure it to make sure that you are still on dimension. I know for me, a couple of times I've made my foundation row chain. It's, it's on mark with the stitch count and it is dimensional to the dimension that I want, but then you work two rows in and sometimes those rows, the pattern itself will shrink or the pattern will expand. And you want to recheck at that point to make sure that you are still dimensionally on track, okay? If you're only two rows in, then you're invested enough to where the project will be accurate in measurement but you're not too far in where if you have to take it apart, it's it's not devastating. You can still take it apart and it's okay to start over. My little tip for you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching this video, spending time with me in going over multiple stitch count requirement. It's one of those things that you don't realize how important it is until you realize how important it is. <laughs> so thank you so much for learning this. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I do always, love spending time with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys. What? I've been, okay. There's been a question that I've been, there's a question. There's a question that I've been asked a lot and it really wasn't until my last crochet video. All right, that's my little helpful tip to you that I highly recommend that you 